Good morning, mathematicians. We are on week nine, and we're starting off with volume. Now, this volume for sure is irregular. And we're going to be really careful as we think about each of these layers and have an cube. Let's start with the top. The top for sure has one cube. That is the easiest. Now, the next layer has three because I know it has to have one that is supporting that top cube, right? Now, this has the three cubes that are under that, but then it has four, five, six. It has six more that are sticking out uh, in front of the three that were in the previous layer. Now, let's come to this. If I know that this has six cubes, then when I come to my next one, I can just count the cubes that are beyond that. We had six here, so now we have seven, eight. We have eight more cubes, or we have eight cubes here. We've got two more in the layer above it. Now, if this one had eight, then this next one down here is going to have nine cubes because there's just one more. Now, I know that that is also true because look, this is a three by three array. So yes, there should be nine cubes in that bottom layer, all right? Now we're gonna be joining these together. Well, I love looking at this because I see some good groups that I can join. I can do this one and 10 or one and nine to give me a group of 10, right? Now, when I add this six and this uh, eight together, I have 14, 15, 16, 17. So I just kind of circled my making a 10. And then I added the six plus eight was 14 plus three more was 17. Together, that gives me 27 cubes. And yes, this figure has 27 cubes, which we are going to say is 27 cubic centimeters. What a cool question to start with. Very interesting with the layering. All right, we are going to representing the shaded area. Now, I love these questions because this is really helping me think about representing multiplication of fractions and whole numbers. What I want us to think about today is what number is represented here in the column vertically? And what number is represented here in the rows horizontally? Okay, now my whole is set to be two rectangles. We always ask ourselves first, what is the whole, right? Now, the whole is represented as two rectangles, and that's true. But that's going to be especially important when we look at it in our rows. When I look at it in columns, this represents one. Well, this would be the second, this would be the third, and this would be the fourth. So the entire length is going to be four. Can you see that? Because the way that it's represented, I'm ignoring the label on the side. I'm only thinking about the column. This is one, two, three, four. So here, vertically, my up and down, my columns, I see four holes. Now, let's ask ourselves the same question, but let's ask ourselves about the horizontal, the horizontal figure. This is one, and that's true, but notice my whole is set to be two of these shaded areas equals one. So really, I could represent this as a fraction, because if my whole is set to be two of these, remember the denominator of a fraction is always and forever how many parts the whole has. Well, how many parts does the whole have? When I look at it this way, the whole has two parts. Now, how many of those parts do I have? Let's count how many rows are shaded. We have one, two, three, four, five. How many rows are shaded? Five. And how many parts does a whole have? A whole has two. So when I look at this in its rows, I see five halves. When I look at this in the column, I see four. So really, to find the area of this, to do the length times the width, I would be multiplying four times five halves. This, absolutely, positively, I'm gonna put stars around it, because this is the very important takeaway that we have to know in order to select the expression that match it, right? Now, four times one or four times five over two 
could also be four times what? Well, how many times does two go into five? It goes in two times. And how many are left over? One. So just like I can represent this as four times five over two, I can also represent this as four times two and a half, right? That's very important as well. So in number one, I literally see the very first thing that we start. And we already discussed how we see that. Now, the second one looks pretty good to start. It looks like this one, but I have to be attentive to details. Is the operator correct? No, it's not. This is not true because it should be multiplication, right? Not addition. So I'm not going to circle that one. Now, taking a look at number three, do I see 5 divided by 2? Do I see 5 over 2? I sure do. 5 over 2. 5 divided by 2 is right here. So I see 5 divided by 2 times 4. Yes. So number 3 is correct. We are going to circle. The last one here, do I see 4 times 2 and a half? I sure do. I didn't circle number 2, but I can circle number 4 because it's literally the same thing, but with the correct operator, with the correct symbol, you should see multiplication. So Monday is true, or excuse me, uh, number four is true. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. This one takes up two spaces. There's a lot of thinking in this problem. Let's dive in. It says, Billy makes a prism one inch by five inches by five inches. I'm just going to write that down so that I can have some scrap work to consider. She then decides to create layers equal to her first one. Fill in the chart below and then explain how you know the volume of each new prism. Finally, write an equation to show how you found the volume. The first one is done for you. So this is the thing that she made, right? She made a figure that was one by five by five. Now I could, just for the sake of helping you see what we're talking about, um, I could go ahead and draw this. And if I drew this out, you would see just a very, very short uh, little prism. And certainly, I see five times five, which gave me my name. But then it was just one layer, right? This is what it looks like. Now, that's why this top row that's completed for us says that she has one layer. It's 25 inches cubed, and it's one times five times five. Now, what it says is that she wants to add another layer. So she's going to do this exact same thing, but again. So instead of having a one here, she's going to have a two. But the other numbers are going to stay the same. She's going to take this again and stick it on top of itself. Now, the only thing that's changed here is that I'm adding another layer of 25. So I would have 25 plus 25, which would be 50 inches cubed. And that's true because if I do five times five, I have 25. 25 times two, for sure, is 50. Now notice we're skipping layer three and we're going right to layer four. So now instead of a two, I'm gonna have a four in the front and I'm gonna multiply that by five times five. Five times five is 25. 25 times four is like having four quarters. How many cents do you have? Well, you have a hundred right? And that would be 100 inches cubed. Okay, we've got one more to do. I'm not going to have a four in the front. I'm going to have an eight because I'm going to have eight of those. Now, everything else is the same. So really, it's like I've taken this and I've doubled it. What is 100 doubled? Well, it's going to be 200. So this one is going to be 200 inches cubed. Lots of thinking in that problem, but really we're so ready for it because we've been practicing that layer structure. Let's do our very last question for Monday. Benedict Cucumber, Cucumber Batch, filled 13 jars with pickle juice. Each jar has a capacity of one third of a liter. How many total liters has Benedict filled? Well, let's think about this problem again. I always tell my students we need to read it one time just for understanding 
then raise it another time to actually analyze our number. So Benedict Cucumber Batch filled jars. And how many jars did he fill? Well, he filled 13. Each jar was filled to capacity. And what was the capacity? Well, it was a third of a liter. But we want to know how many total liters he had among 13 jars, all full to this amount. So yes, what will we need to do? Multiply. We're going to take our 13 jars that were all filled to this capacity. We're going to multiply that together. 13 times 1 is 13. And we have 13 thirds. So we can leave that as our answer. We can write that we have 13 thirds of a liter. Now, if you prefer, you can say, how many times does 3 go into 13? Well, it goes in four times. How many are left over? Your remainder becomes your new numerator. So our new numerator is 1, and our denominator stays the same. You could also take this to 4 and 1 third liter. That's another option for you. But truly, either of those are perfectly correct. And that finishes out our Monday class.